Dillard, Georgia at the Dillard Bluegrass and Barbecue Contest. And during this contest, it's a Kansas City Barbecue Society contest. We've also done ancillaries, which are non-sanctioned, but we're doing cabbage entry tonight, and we're also doing a grits entry tonight. And I'm going to be doing shrimp and grits, and I'm also doing a Mexican burrito with cabbage and cheese. Um, we're up here having a good time, and, and like most folks, uh, it, adapt these recipes the way you see fit. And uh, I learned to cook just from watching people on television and some great Southern cooks at home, so please enjoy. I'm going to start off with our grits here. And a good key and a good trick is to use a nice chicken stock. So we're going to get this hot here. And they've supplied us with the cabbage and grits for these categories. And the, the grits are a local stone ground grits, so it makes a big difference from the, any instant grits or anything you get in the grocery store. These take longer to cook? It does take a lot longer to cook. Uh, instant grits, I mean, they're mere 80 minutes. Um, and they're, they're, um, they're just not quite as flavorful. This is going to take at least an hour, if not an hour and 15, 20 minutes to cook. So that's one reason we're starting so far ahead. We're going to let that get hot there. I'll go ahead and start sauteing some uh, cabbage and stuff down also. You can start sauteing, you can melt butter, you can do uh, olive oils. Um, for this application, we're just going to do just a little bit of butter and olive oil to start off with. Olive oil will raise the smoke temperature of the butter a little bit? It will. It, it'll raise it up. It also has some deeper flavors. You know, a, a decent olive oil is a really good thing to do. Just saute and you're not going to need a whole lot of butter, just a couple of tablespoons. I'm just chopping this down to about a medium grade. Sometimes you julienne them or whatever you need. We're going to put about a cup of onion in there to start off with. Grab this other right here. I went ahead and prepped some cabbage. Look at the size of that cabbage they brought us. Big, beautiful, locally grown. Can't beat it. Just take and pull the leaves off, wash it up. I'll add the rest of that as it cooks down. Fresh cabbage is another amazing thing too. The fresher you get it from the farmer to your body, the better off you are. The taste is great. You can flavor it with all kinds of different things. Keep it vegan, vegetarian. Um, we are going to add some meat and stuff to this today. Depth of flavor, we're adding a little ham stock to this. So 
little salt, pepper, garlic. This doesn't have a lot of salt in it. I just keep some pre-mixed. It makes it a lot easier. Some things you need exact measurements and some things you just go by feel. You're going to have a little bit of liquid le releasing from this cabbage here. And of course I do have some oil and butter in there. But we might want to add just a little bit of water here in a minute. We'll see how this goes. You can see it's already starting to cook down a little bit. Also for fun, I've went ahead and blacked off some bacon pretty good. I've got some a little crispier than others, and I've got some that's not as cooked as much. We'll cut that up and add some more flavor to that cabbage. Just a little H2O. It'll cook out, right? Oh yeah, all that's going to cook out. We'll go ahead and rest of our cabbage here on top. You can cover this, folks. You can boil it up. I mean, just all different ways. I mean, coming up in the house, I mean, Mom just added a piece of fat back to a big old boiling pot of water, put her cabbage in there, let it cook down. We're just sauteing it up. We're going to get it where it's not quite um, to its a mush point or anything like, like that. We want a little bit of crunch to it because we're going to make a burrito with this. So we're going to add all our beautiful mix and we add some more of that chopped bacon that's cooked a little bit more toward the end. I've got some cheese we're going to put in it. Roll it in a nice uh, spinach burrito and then we're going to top it with our cheese sauce that I made yesterday and our homemade salsa. How'd you make a cheese sauce? Our cheese sauce, we use a Mexican soft cheese. I take and melt it down with whole milk. You can use whole milk or cream, makes the best, best uh, mixture for it. Queso and fresca. Queso fresca. And then I added uh, a little bit of garlic. I just use granulated garlic for that process. And I uh, boiled down uh, some uh, jalapenos, made them soft, deseeded them, and chopped them very real fine. So it's going to have a nice flavor to it without being too hot. Um, you know. The skull unit or the heat unit in pepper is so hard to, to figure out sometimes, especially with the jalapeno, because it'll vary several hundred degrees, you know, or you know, in, in the skull unit. So you know, you have to taste it and see how hot it is. The ones I had yesterday were quite hot, so I only used four small ones and about a quarter of cheese sauce, but they were real tiny, but good. This is uh, starting to boil up right here, so we're going to turn this down a little bit. We're going to take our grits. These are not fine ground, these are more coarsely ground, look like. These, these are a stone ground grit. You can see how, how, how coarse that is. And it's just a beautiful product. When they gave them to us, I was like very pleased to have this. They're very hearty. Now we're going to take... If you know your measurements, you know, like it's a 16 ounce cup. And I want to do about two cups, so that's, that's 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. We're going to cook this down. And it's usually six cups of liquid, roughly about six cups of liquid to, to a grit like this, where on instant grits you're only going to use about half that. One of the best things I like to do to keep your grits from clogging up is just, just, just use a tool like this, very simple, you know, doesn't clog it up. And as it starts cooking and thickening, we can decide if we need to add more water. Um, and actually, instead of water and more chicken stock, we're going to add some cream to this. We're going to use a lot of heavy cream. We're going to use some Parmesan cheeses. And I've got some big 21-count uh, shrimp that we're going to be using. Uh, I've got a blackening seasoning that we're going to be putting and cooking them on the Primo grills outside here just a little bit. 
and then we'll mix everything together for our shrimp and grits. I'm starting to come to a boil, so we want to turn that down a little bit. Because you want to simmer this. If you don't simmer it and don't steer it, your grits are going to clump together and they're going to burn on bottom. And that's the last thing you want, especially on something that's going to take an hour to cook. We hope this turns out nice today. Hope the judges are going to like it this evening. I know my crew is. <laughs> Start to see it release a little bit more liquid. Yep. I wanted to get a little bit of water in there just a second ago, just so I could get that that ham stock mixed up very nicely in there. Is this your ham stock, or is this a commercially available ham stock? This is commercially available here. You can make your own stocks at home, but to do it properly, you need a giant pot. I mean, a massive pot and good inter intercut bones. You know, you want a backbone or something like that, or a big ham bone that you can cut up into pieces, and we do that. And we'll saute and, and get those bones hot and we'll start release that marrow and then cover it up with water and, and put a little spice in there, a little salt or pepper if, we, if you want to, and you cook it down. And once you cook it down, you strain it out and then you keep cooking it and keep cooking it and keep cooking it, which makes your bouillon. And you can take that and freeze it in individual like uh, ice cube sizes and put it in your freezer and pull one out at a time for a cup of soup. Great thing to do. But on this, you know, in the restaurant and everything in high quality and high volume, we use a pretty decent product. Uh, that we get from our wholesalers there. But the grocery store has some great products. You can get everything you need at particularly almost any grocery store now. And definitely online. Alright, this is getting to a nice point. We're going to let it cook for just a couple more minutes. And I'm going to stop the cooking process. We'll taste it, re-season it, and then a little bit later on here we're going to take and make our burritos. Turn that off. I'm already starting to feel some thickening on the bottom there. But again, with the stone ground, it's going to take a good hour. And I suspect with these two cups, we're probably in an hour and 15 minutes. You're on. All right, so folks, we're we'll back. And bit, what folks. we've done here is I've taken some shrimp. I've, I've, I've got them peeled, deveined, and I pulled the tails off them and put them on skewers so it's going to cook easier for us. We're going to cook these on the grill. So I've got some blackening spices made up here. You can buy it. It uh, makes some really good product out in the grocery stores. So what you do is you take and just put as much on it as you want to. You've got to remember there's a lot of sodium in this stuff, so you've got to be very careful. We're going to put blackening spice and my rub on it. Put a little bit on both sides. Just a little bit of rub. This is what we use on our barbecue right here. And again, this has got some sodium in it also, so we're going to be very careful not overuse it a little bit. Because the shrimp has sodium in it to begin with. These are some beautiful shrimp. And then we're going to lightly hit it with some olive oil. I like the spice on there first. You can coat it with the olive oil first, but then it don't get quite to the meat. All right, let's go to the grill. All right, we've got this heated up to about 350 degrees. And it's direct. You haven't got this a stone is, in there? Uh, the, this is direct heat right here. There's no heat deflector. And we're going to cook these shrimp on both sides. I'm going to have to overdo them. You can cook them loose, but then it, you got to turn each one up. This is the way we're going to do this. We're going to be able to just turn them, turn five at a time on the skewers. Except for that lost red gauge right there. All right, we're going to let them cook for just a couple minutes and come back and turn them over. We'll finish our grits inside. How long total cooking time? This right here is only going to take about 10. 15 minutes probably at the very, very, right, very folks, most. We're here, we're going to just heat back up just a little bit more. 
knowing your cooking surface, no matter what you're cooking on, whether it's an open fire or your oven at home, know exactly how it cooks because everything cooks a little different. And the dials on the stove don't necessarily mean it's cooking at the right temperature. So we've got our grits going here. They're, they're getting uh, almost completely done. We're adding a uh, pint of heavy cream. By the way, this is a dish that you might not want to tell your cardiologist about. We've got smoked garlic. We take whole heads of garlic and put them on the smoker. With a, cut the tips off and put a little olive oil on them. That is a great flavor profile. You can mash this up, uh, blend it up, and then put it in the refrigerator. Keeps for several weeks up to a month. But uh, you can do one hit. You know, any time you get your grill fired up, mix that all in there. See how the color is changing there. We had a nice, wonderful, wonderful amber color. Now we're getting a little bit more white. We're going to take a pinch of our rub. We're going to take just a little bit more pepper. All right, now we're going to kick it up with some cheeses. Here we got some Parmesan cheeses and cheddar cheese. This is delicious, but remember, a little goes a long ways because it is such such a full, full calorie dish, and you're dealing with grits. See how creamy it is? As one of the wonderful things about grits, grits are a is is a polenta. You can call it polenta, um, and it's a blank palate. Plain grits are bland. But plain anything's bland. You know, you take, you know, just breads or whatever. Sometimes you want to kick it up and have some hearty flavors to it. Uh, grits to take on any flavor you want. Remember, we didn't use water in these, um, but you can cook them with water in the morning time and add just salt and pepper to them and butter. That's how we brought it as a kid. Crumble some bacon, sausage into it, just a little bowl of grits. Great southern dish. Oatmeal is very popular up north. Grits are popular down south. That's the reason these fine folks here at Dillard, Georgia, pick shrimp and grits as one of their um, one of their things to do because for their ancillaries, it's a great, great dish. There'll be some dishes today turned in. There'll be cheesecake made with grits. I heard that somebody's doing a a, a, a lime meringue pie with grits. Now they're probably using that in the crust, but we're doing a good traditional. I want people to taste my grits. I want to be able to serve it up to them. All right, folks, we're going to let that just sit there and simmer for a minute. With our shrimp, we're going to go turn our shrimp. And then we're going to be applying it to the plate here just a little bit. So here we are. We're going to finish this up. And what we're going to do is we've got this ready. We've got a lot of stuff in there already. We're going to take a few of these shrimp and we're going to chop them up and we're going to garnish the tops of them with the whole shrimp. What I like to do with the, the, uh, these shrimp is we pulled them off about 80%, 85% done. We're going to come up with a couple of pieces. That way, when you reach in and get a bite, you're going to get a bite of shrimp. That's a good sized shrimp. And they're going to finish cooking while they're in there, folks. Guaranteed. Beautiful, beautiful meat. So we're going to layer these in here. A little bit of bacon. Always check your seasoning. Don't over salt because you're going to be adding stuff to it. You can always add salt later, but it's hard to get it out. Our spices have salt in it. Your bacon's got salt in it. We've already killed the heat on this because you got so much heat, grits hold that mass. It takes a long, long time for this to cool down. So we've got plenty, plenty of heat. The shrimp now are, I'm sure, are completely done. We hope the judges are going to love it. I know my crew is. heat out. They're making us use a 9 by 9 styrofoam box to turn this in in. Otherwise we'd want to do something really fancy. We'd want to put it on a platter. But we're just going to take this layered in here nice and easy. And I think 
can go too full because we've got to carry this to the table. Now, take all we can. I'm going to throw a little bit more shrimp in there. And some presentation, some texture, some look and color. Bacon again. We want this to set just right here at the surface. You have to turn a minimum of six servings, which we have a lot more than that because they're only take a few bites until they taste it. Then I don't want to eat the whole thing. Now what we're going to do, since we've got six judges. We're going to give them an extra treat. I'm picking one that was completely done off the grill. We're going to lay down six individual shrimp, and we're not going to submerge these. Don't forget the table captain. That's right. We have a beautiful table captain that's going to be right there. It's going, man, I wish I had a bite of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do seven because we don't want to forget that table captain. That's pretty, but it smells better. <laughs> and tastes even better. And you are? I am Johnny Mitchell with Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse, competing in Dillard, Georgia at the Bluegrass and Barbecue Festival. And your restaurant is where? Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse in 100 Covered Ridge Road, U Harley, Georgia. Google us, find us down there, folks, and come see us. Hey, Ron. All right, folks, so I'm bringing this back up to some heat right here. Again, it's a little crunchy. We're going with some of the same flavor profiles. We're uh, changing it up a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of extra of the smoked garlic in here that we talked about earlier. You get that done. All right. This doesn't have hardly any salt in it, so besides the bacon. So we're going to kick it up with my spice rub a little bit. That we that use cabbage is sweet. You need a little cut the sweetness. Exactly, and it does. This is locally grown organic cabbage. Just, just beautiful. And I tasted it a while ago, and it does have a lot of sugar in it. Natural sugar. We haven't added any to it. Alright, so we're going to sit here, get that going a little bit. We're going to cut this. We're going to take it for tis. And again, I've got a little 9 by 9 box I've got to do. I would normally do a big, beautiful presentation, put it in a boat, and set it up. But so we're going to have to make it fit in this box. I got to have six pieces minimum. We're going to have seven for the table captain. So I'll probably put six or seven pieces in here. We're going to have to cut these in half. So what we're going to do is just like a burrito. We're going to put a little bit of this cabbage. Too hot. Not too hot, make sure. Make sure before you pick something up without a rag. We're going to add just a little cheese sauce as a binder. Have some of that crunchy bacon in here. So when that judge bites it, we're hopefully going to have a nice little taste. Alright, there we go. This one we're going to do some Parmesan cheese. And just keep it like that. And just simple. Roll it over, pull it, tuck it. Do this a few more times. Again, again, a little bit of this Parmesan cheese, folks. We're gonna roll it over. Pull it. I don't think speed-wise I'd ever make it at a uh, Mexican restaurant, but I'll tell you what, we can, we can cook some good food. This side. Pick them up right here in this box. Remember, i got to have six minimum. We're going to put eight in there. I'm going to make it work. 
bet they all get eaten. What do you bet? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So we're going to just squeeze that up a little bit. I'm limited on my presentation, but we're going to just take it and have a good time with it. So now we got this wonderful cheese sauce again. We've made this little melty melt. Maybe a little bit more up here. What do you think? All right. We've got our wonderful homemade salsa that we serve in the restaurant here. You can this in the... We do. You can buy it. Actually, the way we do it is you buy it fresh from us. We'll t just every day when we make our salsa, we have these mason jars and you buy our salsas. And all our barbecue sauces and everything, spice rugs right inside. <laughs> Wonderful cilantro and tomatoes and nice spices. All right, folks. This is our beautiful cabbage category. We're going to take a snapshot and send it to the judges. And you are? Johnny Mitchell with Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse. You Harley, Georgia. Come see us. Hi, folks. I'm Johnny Mitchell of Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse. We're at 100 Covered Bridge Road in the big city of U Harley, Georgia. Uh, we're in my kitchen back here, and what we're going to do today is go over a couple of uh, items that we do, uh, specials, and, and also some of our menu items. And I'm going to do a uh, pepper today that we're going to fire roast, and then we're going to take and stuff it, and then bake it in the oven. It's a really great, easy recipe that I'd love for you to come here and try at the restaurant, but I want you to try it at home also. Part of the fun is uh, cooking, experimenting, and playing. Here at the restaurant, we're open six days a week if you don't come here and have me fix it for you. Uh, we're open Tuesday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So go check us out on, uh, on the, uh, online at johnnymitchellsmokehouse.com. But uh, let's have play a little bit here and do some cooking. We've got these ancient sweet peppers, as they're called. Uh, you can use any type of pepper you like. I like these because they are a little bit sweeter. Uh, the, the, the minimal of seeds, uh, but you can do it with poblano, you can do it with any type of pepper, you can do it with bell peppers, the jalapenos, uh, wrap them any way you want and put any ingredients um, any way you want. So what we're going to do is I'm going to place this on our burner over here. And what's really good about this is you can do this with any type of fire. You can do this on your grill at home. You can do it with a torch, um, which is a lot of fun. Put it on a flat top grill, uh, roast them on any type of fire. And so we're going to get these cooking here. And they're going to char up real nice. What we've done, you'll get them all the way done to this consistency. Now that looks burned. But what's going to happen with this is you're going to have a nice, nice black all the way around. See how that one's already starting to cook? I'm going to turn that down for a second and we're going to start cooking on this. Brad, flip this and turn this around in just a moment for me. So I'm going to come over to the sink. You can put this in a, in a paper bag and it's going to sweat completely and pull off easily. Put it under a sprayer. But look at that. That char is coming right off. And it's going to give the pepper a nice roasted flavor. And when you hear roasted red peppers that you see in oil and stuff, this is exactly what you're getting. Typically it's a red bell, but these work great. If you smoke them, smoke peppers, typically you're going to find a jalapeno that's smoked, and that's called chipotle. Alright, that's good. Again, these are light on seeds, so what I like to do is just cut the top off that. We can trim it up. Slice it down. As you can see, not a lot of seeds compared to a lot of peppers. They're real easy to clean out. A lot of people leave them in there, but I'm just going to pull these out. We're going to rinse that one more time. When you do a pepper like this, 
you can take now, you can dice this up as pimento, put it in, uh, we, we actually use this style in our, um, our crab sandwiches when we make our, our uh, crab patties. They're really great. Use them in all different kind of applications. What I've got here is some cream cheese, some softened cream cheese. We're going to take a little bit of purple onion we've diced up. We're going to take a pinch of salt, a couple of pinches of garlic, and I'm using a granulated garlic here, and this is our smokehouse rub that we use on all our meats, and we have used it in, in dips and things of this nature, a couple of those. We've also got our chopped beef brisket right here. Normally we take and slice this and put it on a plate or sandwich for you, but I'm going to stuff this pepper with this also. You can do this any way you want. You can make it vegetarian, straight full of meat, take mushrooms, whatever you'd like in here. But right now we're just gonna keep it pretty simple. Get it mixed thoroughly. Let me get a spoon. Put a little bit in here. Ah, a little more. What the heck? I'm take. We're gonna fold this back up. Now you can do several of these. Take, put this in here. We're gonna take some of our special cheese that we use here in the restaurant. Put that over the top of it. We're just gonna throw this in the oven for a few minutes. Just, just nice and golden. This is a great simple recipe. Everything you got here is basically pre-cooked, so now the only thing to do is melt in the cheese. Our brisket's been pre-cooked. Takes about 12 hours to cook that, so when you do that at home, it's going to take you a little bit. But take your leftovers from your brisket, use it in sandwiches, use it in dips. This right here, just with some tortilla chips, would be amazing. But now we're going to take that and just like I said, let it melt in there. It's going to take us about uh, three to five minutes to do that, and we're going to have us a nice little pepper when we're done. Hi, folks. Johnny Mitchell again at Johnny Mitchell Smokehouse. Appreciate you coming back with us. We're going to do our garlic parmesan home fries. Uh, again, this, you can find this on the menu every day in the restaurant. It's one of the favorite sides that we have here, but also it's something you can do at home. So what you do is you start out with a russet potato. I use about a 70 count potato, but it doesn't matter the size. And you're going to take these and bake them. All right, once you've cooled them down completely, you're going to take and cut them up into chunks. How big the chunks, it's up to you. There's not a lot of uh, rocket science on how to cut these up. But you just basically cut them up into chunks. And this right here is going to make two to three orders, believe it or not. Now you can take and fry these up any way you want to, because again, we're making a home fry out of it, just like you'd have at breakfast or whatever you want to do here. Uh, they're fine with some saute with some onions with them. We're going to put them in our deep fryer. You can pan fry them just as easily, though. If you've got a countertop fryer at home, uh, electric fryer, that works great. But we're going to take and use them in our deep fryer today. We're going to cut those, cook those down to just their lightly golden brown. We're going to start sauteing some garlic. Melt some butter in a pan. We have pre-melted butter here we keep all the time. We take a nice generous portion of garlic right here. This is very simple, very quick to do. Garlic's one of our favorite things. Now the problem with garlic, if people don't uh, aren't watching it, it burns very easily. It's got a lot of sugar in it, and you don't want that to burn. It becomes pungent, and you don't like that taste. We're gonna let that cook for just a minute. 
It's going to start sizzling here in just a second. Right here, our potatoes, they're almost ready. It don't take long at all for that to happen. Start to see it frying a little bit, sizzling a little bit. That's working. You don't want it much past this. All right, take and kill the fire on it. Take your potatoes. Nice, nice good color. Again, we don't want to overdo it. Just toss that around a little bit. The way we're going to finish them off, we're going to put a pinch of salt. You already got a lot of garlic on there, so you don't need to add any more garlic to it. Nice dried parsley. Part dried parsley works very well in this. We're also doing some nice, beautiful shredded Parmesan cheese. You can do shredded uh, parm, you can do the flake parm. Um, the powder parm is great for a certain applications, you know, if you want to do something at home with some spaghetti or whatever, but there's nothing like this fresh parm. The residual heat from this pan is going to melt that. As you can already see, it's starting to melt. You want to coat it very nicely with that garlic and all that butter. Take and serve it up any way you like it. We're going to put it in our little uh, bowl right here, a little cup. Look at that. Look at that shredded melt right there. That is so delicious. Oh yeah, get all that cheese on there. And that, folks, is our Parmesan garlic home fries. Enjoy.